technical feasibility study. I'm not debating on any controversies that have happened since morning about all the controversies. Basically, all I have to tell you is an evolving technique, evolving technology, evolving surgeons, evolving evidence, and I personally feel that all the end generation surgeons should be aware of this technology. So I'm not getting into any debates, I'll just show you the technique and the technology part of this. TAM basically is a minimally invasive procedure pioneered by Hughes. It employs specialized microsurgical instruments providing better exposure, visualization and increasing the precision of surgery, rectal surgery. It has some access to high rectal lesions and traditional methods that used to be employed and has significantly advanced the surgical treatment of rectal diseases, both benign and malignant. The experience seems to be coming from the benign diseases, which is getting translated to malignant diseases. Now, there are different platforms, instruments, and patient positions that are the limitations in the current day term practice. Because of the position of the scope in this traditional the scope, or if we have to use any of the additional port that are currently available, be it the single port surgery, the patient position has to be changed depending on the location of the tumor. It has to be in the prone position, or the left stratal position, or the jackknife position, or the lithotomy position based on the position of the other. This is basically the biggest limitation of the current day practice, basically because of the position of the scope that we have. And also, the instruments that are designed uh, cannot be universally used for all the patients. So the curvature curve instruments that are available have uh, limitations, especially in different patients with different pelvic corners. So we don't have standard equipment as of today to do these procedures in all patients. So these procedures can be done in limited set of patients in current clinical practice. Various procedures have been involved from this. Basically, it's a transanal endoscopic microsurgery. They involve two transgenital minimally invasive surgery, which includes both benign diseases and malignant diseases. Then it extended to inexperienced hand with transgenital mesorectal excision. <coughs> and we have a combination of abdominal and perineal procedures that are done. I, told, I mean, trans abdominal procedure and transgenital procedures which can be done like this. The biggest advantage seems to be, especially when you want to have a low margin for this, you can have a very to do a transgenital procedure do a marking, do a bursting, and then go proximally, and then do the rest of the dissection above, especially in very narrow pelvis. So all these procedures have limitations. Selected patients, it can be done for both benign and malignant diseases. Now, what is the evidence? I'll not talk about benign, basically, because benign is basically done to gain expertise, actually, and it has shown some evidence. Now, for malignancy, there is some promising evidence comparable morbidity and mortality rates uh, compared to traditional laparoscopic uh, procedures. Added benefits are uh, decreasing positive CRM and distal uh, resection margin. High quality TME specimens with clear margins have been consistently reported across many studies. PA TME is safe, effective and innovative approach for both malignant and benign rectal diseases. And there is scope for expanding the surgical options and potentially setting new benchmarks in patients' outcomes and quality of life. There are several challenges and limitations of this. The learning curve and the need for specialized training, especially in managing complex cases like bulky tumors. And RCTs like the color uh, 3 trial are expected to provide deeper insights and long-term <coughs> oncological outcomes and further validate the role of these procedures. So I'm not getting into any of the debate with surgical oncologists here. The biggest limitations of these are visualization, retracting uh, tissues, amount of light that is available right now as you go proximally the light gets dissipated, the instrument reach is uh, limited, the precision with which you can use some of these procedures is limited, but surgeons have extended their limitations since they started reaching as I had the splenic flexure with some expertise and people are technically uh, have gained experience. Now, what the technical challenges that we have? Why am I talking about this? Is basically because uh, Baijus asked me to talk about robotic procedures. I have to talk about the technical limitations of the current day practice. The operating solid shafted instruments through a rigid tube. 
I mean, suppose if we are using a uh, SILS port that is different, but we are using a standard port, then there is a lot of difficulty in maneuvering this instrument. Inability to move the instrument in the right and left fashion within the space that you have. And it requires constant repositioning of the temp scope using the Martin arm to keep the target anatomy within the reach. And the fixed position of the lens on the top of the temp operator limits the instrument reach to the bottom 180 degrees. And this requires complex repositioning of the patient during the entire procedure. This is compared to what, what are we doing about robotic temp. Now this has got a 3D image, magnified high resolution image. A 360 degree preset articulation of the instrument with eliminating tremor and a 360 degree image orientation plus a three arm plus camera control by the robotic operator with improved ergonomics allows a greater surgical precision when you're using robotic as compared to the standard then. Now this is just an example of what can be done in for local this thing actually. We are not wanting to do any TME procedure, robotic TME procedures because we are still in the learning phase to show how this can be adapted and how this can be taken into clinical practice. Select cases uh, are taken for this and the position of the patient you can see you can use the SIL support for this actually when, especially when you are using the robotic uh, instrumentation you can use the SIL support which has got a, this thing for changing the port positions and as compared to the standard M uh, scope that we have. So the biggest advantage seems to be using this instrumentation and using this sales port is that the sport, port positions can be changed, the instrument port position can be changed. Docking is not that very complex as people think. Actually, it is uh, uh, relatively simple, especially if you are doing it in a prone position. But if you are doing in the standard lithotomy position, then it is absolutely very difficult to dock the position, uh, yeah. dock the, 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 the robotic system onto the thing. So the biggest limitation that we have on this robotic M as of today is that you have to do this in the prone position in all these procedures. It cannot be done in a lithotomy. So you understand that the limitations of regular TAM and there are limitations of robotic then, but the precision and in which the 360 yeah, yeah. degree movement that is allowing, it's great, allowing greater precision of the movement of this, and then also suturing the thing actually and getting good depth into the thing actually, and then suturing is also possible with this. Now, now this robotic TAPME, it ensures a known distal margin in a free irradiated rectum and expands sphincter preserving surgeries. That's the biggest advantage and that is the most difficult aspect of pelvic dissection, especially in narrow primary pelvises actually, I mean it has an advantage in this. There is some evidence to show that this is a meta-analysis that has got about 20 articles, 5 case reports, very very short series, you understand, using Da Vinci, XI and single port. Now 5 studies reported negative surgical margins, 1 reported positive margin, Six did not comment on it. The OR time is variable, patient positioning is based on the location, supine, prone, modified, and 11 of the 12 studies reported different closure, most commonly using the suture. So you can see that the evidence that we have is very, very limited as of today. In select patient, that is done in select centers with high degree of expertise. Now, there are combinations of this actually right now. Either you can use a conventional temp for the distal dissection and do a robotic uh, anti-resection. Especially in patients who have a narrow pelvis where you think and cannot really get a distal margin. This is a combination of these two procedures. All these permutations, combinations can be allowed now. Whether you want to do a complete robotic trans and then redock it again and do it, I mean trans-abdominal robotic surgery, or you don't want to do a regular trans initial dissection transrectally to get a better margin and then do the uh, uh, rest of the procedure robotically. These are all the permutations of the combinations which are available in current day human practice which will help evolving this technique and maybe a day will come where we will have a completely different procedure that can be practiced. Now, other biggest advantage actually recently we had was actually some of these lesions actually whenever we are doing this robotic procedure it is not very easy to the still the haptic 
field is not that very good in the robotic procedure. Sometimes it's very difficult to see the lesion or to identify the lesion. Then we take the help of intraoperative colonoscopy procedure to make sure that we identify not this lesion and then use this trans elimination procedure, trans elimination colonoscopy, trans elimination to make sure that you're getting more clearance. So these, I mean, intraoperative use of colonoscopy is extended like what we do in laparoscopy, endoscopy, cognitive surgery, especially where you're not able to see the lesions. Now, there are limitations of this, and we have this emerging single port. This is still not available. Actually, they told us that we're going to get this port sometime next month. This is the culmination of all the procedures together, plus different lab robotic, lab robotic platforms. This is the culmination of both laparoscopic procedures and the robot that we have in current clinical practice. The end result is the single port robotic system. It is going to be available soon. This is the reason why I'm saying that all the surgeons should be aware of this procedure. You should not deny that this procedure is going to make a dent. It's going to make a big dent in the clinical practice. The biggest advantage of this, actually I've seen this procedure being done. Docking is easier and faster. Biggest advantage consists of the C arm that provides a 360 rotation both around the remote center of the cannula and within the instrument port. Allows visualization of all rectal quadrants without the need to reposition the patient. You don't have to change the patient position of this. The instrument brisket and elbow articulations allows triangulation around the target anatomy and allows ease of dissection. Single port articulation helps to minimize pollution between the instrument and facilitates suturing. And ergonomically, there is no competition for the workspace between the surgeon and the assistant. So this is going to be a real game changer once it comes into clinical practice. But before people can start practicing in this or have access to this, I think a regular temp procedure should be practiced if you have access to using the conventional instrument so that you get used to this procedure. There is a lot of evidence comparing all these platforms. Now single port robotic seem to provide high quality outcomes similar to PEM for local excision of rectal lesions and single port robotics at faster operative time compared to uh, to the clinical and oncological outcomes of time, uh, but these are very, very early data. So, the experience worldwide is very, very minimal as far as single port is concerned. It addresses many previous limitations of TAM and TAMIS. Platform is new to the surgical armamentarium, still requires further development. Currently, there are no stapler, section, or residency other than this. To conclude, TAM seems to have some proven advantage in clinical practice, I think everybody should be aware of this. There are several inherent challenges of current day clinical practice. Robotic TEM is the culmination of major developments in rectal cancer management and minimally invasive surgery. Theoretically, it is very appealing and we should remain mindful that the current state is still in early stages. Articulation, vision and compact efficiency will assure the expansion of TEM and the emergence of new robotic systems designed specifically for natural or reverse procedures is expected to expand possibilities in this field. Integration of advanced software into robotic platforms could accelerate the adaption. What we thought would take years, I think it might happen in the next couple of years. Virtual reality, computer vision, artificial intelligence, and image-guided surgery offering significant improvements in both surgical training and patient outcomes. So training should be rapid and translation should also be very uh, fast. So my essence, I think this is an evolving technology and I think all the insurgents who are practicing here should be aware of this procedure. So it is likely to replace some of the conventional procedures that are practiced in current clinical practice. Thank you so much once again for the question.